Um, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to today's Light Bites uh, episode. Uh, today we're going to be looking at lighting for uh, shelving and joinery. Uh, my name is Luke Thomas. Um, I'm the Design Director in the UK uh, for John Cullen. Um, and joined today by Rebecca Crawford, um, who's our Design Director in the Middle East. Uh, so uh, she put together this presentation for you today and um, is going to lead the leave the talk for you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, the, there's lots to talk about with joinery. I think it's one of the things that often might get overlooked or thought of perhaps towards the end of a project. And for me, joinery is one of the things that should be probably done even before uh, maybe where you put your down lights. I think for me, it's, it's such an important part of uh, contributing a lot of different light to the space, but also just elevating the mood and how the whole uh, space can kind of really come together. So we're going to look at all the different options that we can put together in creating different effects. And I think the, the simplest where place to start is potentially with individual undercovered lights. Uh, I think it's a really simple setup. Uh, it's, it's much easier to put together. It's perhaps a little bit more um, sort of suited to perhaps more of a, I would say more of a listed style property, but also something that it gives a bit more of a softer light. The, the linear lighting can often be a little bit more contemporary uh, and we'll obviously come on to that. But I think for this point, it also is, is quite nice that with the fixtures that we look at with the ETA and ETA eyelid, it's, uh, it's got a really shallowing re uh, recessing depth. So it's got a lot of capability that you don't have to necessarily go for the thickest shelves as well. Um, it, it's obviously something that is incredibly important that you don't still see the light source. Um, every time we look at shelving and, and any kind of joinery lighting, it's incredibly important that you do not see the, uh, the source of light itself. Um, so, so here we can see again just a use of the undercover lighting. We've got, actually got a little bit of up lighting used on the, uh, the image to the left side, just at the back, just to add a little bit more depth but it's a super simple way of getting some light into a space and doesn't really need as much forward planning sometimes because you're not necessarily interfering with the supports that would be used with the joinery quite so much. Um, now, if we want to look at uh, the height of the shelf, we can actually remove the eyelid that drops down uh, the lower that the shelf gets, we can actually just have it recessed or flush to the shelf itself. So the little eyelids that you see that comes down is only really used when you have something that's a little bit higher up. This is where when your gaze is looking towards it, you are able to remove that glare just by having this slight drop down. Um, if you do have any kind of different color shelves, obviously you want to consider the finish of the light as well when it comes to that little drop down. You don't want it to uh, interfere with the, the shelving in any way, because as always, you don't want to see the light itself. You just want to see the, the light source. Um, and it's a beautiful way that you can just add some light onto your kitchen counter as well. Then if we want to look at, I think this is quite a fun way that you could change your joinery without adding light, which is obviously something as lighting designers we have to consider as well. We don't necessarily want everything to be lit. I think sometimes shadow is perhaps forgotten about a little bit too much when it comes to lighting. And you can make it quite a playful scheme just by missing out a sort of a checkerboard effect that you can create with every other shelf being lit. And in the two images here, we've lit them ever so slightly differently. We've got one with the eyelid light on the right side, just lighting down onto every single point. But then on the left image, we've got our little footlights just lighting towards the products themselves. So you can see that this is perhaps a little bit better for objects. It can light things a little bit more dramatically because you get those really amazing shadows on the back, which is something that you should always consider as well. Where the light is going to hit the object is obviously going to completely change the, uh, the shadow play that you're going to get with it all. And it's all going to make everything feel uh, very very different and also I think actually when you consider the beam of light as well the intensity that you get that will will change it. Um, moving very very swiftly on to something that's perhaps one of my favorite <laughs> forms of joinery lighting is uh, backlighting. 
with linear strips. It's very, very simple really when you know the different methods that you're looking for um, and, and how to integrate it. It takes a little bit more forward planning uh, than our previous method shown. And I think that's partly obviously down to the placement of the strip, but it also requires a little bit more thinking about the materials. And this is where we have to start thinking a little bit more about what's going to be contributing to the makeup of the joinery. Um, if we have on the left image, as you can see, we've got this beautiful fabric and the light itself is gorgeously diffused as it heads up uh, from each shelf. And it creates this beautiful depth that you would not get if that is a lacquered or a very reflective finish. Obviously, you cannot do this detail with a mirrored back or anything that is incredibly reflective because the first detail is you would not see that, that diffusion of light. And secondly, you would see the light source itself. Um, and it's important to note that with our image on the left, the lower the shelf goes, and as obviously your gaze changes, the deeper the uh, light source should be recessed uh, into the back. So quite often it might be easier to do something where the light is positioned at the back of the shelf itself, which we can see shown on our image on the right. And that is where we actually have a gap between the back of the shelf and the wall at the back of the unit. Again, that has only got the possibility of working if it is a matte or semi-matte um, finish on the back. Um, there's some really beautiful fabrics that you could use at the back. You could change it up using wood or anything else if you've got a different surface at the front. And it can just create this gorgeous depth that you're not going to get if it was front lit. Um, and this is why I tend to use the backlighting effect when it comes to joinery is it's often the moodiest light I would say that you can add uh, and it also just creates a little bit of mystery. I think that the, the image in the front is a beautiful example of how even clear glass objects can suddenly become almost on a stage the way that they're lit and then adding in the front light still allows the objects themselves to be lit um, because one thing that we have got in common with these images is that because everything is backlit, you aren't going to be able to light the face of the object itself. So that's where you need to also consider your downlighting around the space that it's angled towards the front, or perhaps adding in an additional source of light at the front of the shelf so that you can have that light actually washing the object. So there is some forward planning required, um, perhaps with what's going on the shelf. If the, uh, the bookcase on the left hand side was incredibly packed full of books, you're not going to get this beautiful effect. So you do need to consider dressing your shelf accordingly. Um, and here you can see obviously how with the image on the left, we're able to transform with the gap at the back, the light coming both up and down. And it does really, really add to the whole space. And I think it's, it's kind of uh, important to make sure that your joinery lighting is considered first every single time because once you have down lights first and then joinery after, you don't get these beautiful little touches. Um, and the other thing to consider is that it may just be shelves and you have them added in. If you aren't forward planning, you're not going to be able to get these effects. Um, it's not just simply a case of just adding in shelves and, and lighting uh, will go in. It's, it's a bit of a process. That one on the left is tricky um, because it's a reflective finish on the back surface there. Specs. Yes, yeah. It's really difficult so it does, to conceal the light source. It does, yeah, exactly. And that's where the upstand is incredibly important in the back because it just reduces that initial reflected light that you might get. Um, you would have initially had that, that reflected <laughs> line of light if it's in, in a profile. And it just adds, um, and I don't think it really takes away uh, or adds to the thickness of the shelves. It doesn't really give anything uh, as a visual that, that kind of takes away from the effect uh, of the joinery itself. Um, and it doesn't always have to be obviously straight bookcases. I think this is more sort of obviously down to the fabulous joinery design as well, but playing with the light at the back or something like this, it just adds a whole lot of interest to the space. Um, you know, ultimately this whole space could just be lit with the joinery and potentially with the, uh, the decorative wall lights. The, the down lights are able to add to the front so that you're able to see the books themselves, the actual um, spines of the books, but the backlighting is just, it, with the warmth of the wood that's used, it just adds an incredible mood and an atmosphere. 